your money, your taxes, your truck, and your road to success in the trucking industry. This is Trucking Business and Beyond, the show that puts the money where it belongs, back in your pocket. Welcome to my world. I'm your host, Kevin Rutherford. The website is Let'sTruck.com. We are here live tonight. Pick up the phone and join me, 8888 Road Dog. The show is all about the business of trucking. We'll take your calls and answer your questions about trucks, money, fuel mileage, maintenance, tires, taxes, technology, health and fitness on the road, getting started as an owner-operator, finding freight, working with brokers, getting your own authority, you name it, anything goes. If you've got a question, pick up the phone and call right now. Phone lines are open, and they won't stay open for long. So dial right now. We'll be able to get to you. 8888 Road Dog. So uh, I said last night I've been writing a lot of new material. We have a lot of events coming up in the industry. There's a lot going on in the industry right now. Last year, one of the things that I really started to focus on because it was a hot topic and still is in trucking is all of the money that's coming into technology in trucking. You know, technology is has been big for quite some time now, and the trucking industry seems to lag a little behind on technology. But last year, it caught up. And there was a lot of money flooding into uh, trucking technology, and there still is, and some big names. Um, You know, Warren Buffett buying up companies in trucking, uh, Bill Gates investing, lots of money mostly chasing new technologies in trucking around a couple of different topics. One I know nobody likes to hear about, which is autonomous trucks, but there's no point in sticking your head in the sand. They're coming, and l- there's lots of different predictions about how it will happen, when it will happen. I, I don't know when exactly it's going to happen, but it already is. There are several companies already moving freight on the highways, and it's no longer in the testing phase. That This is real freight being moved with autonomous trucks, different levels of autonomous trucks. So level four and five is basically with no driver, or level four is very, very little driver intervention. Level five is no driver whatsoever. If if and when it will happen, I have no idea when, if and when that happens, the trucks will look very different. They could look just like platforms to move freight they could be more like autonomous trailers because most of the truck if you think about it is designed because there's a human in there and when you take the human out the truck design would change pretty dramatically Um, some of those vehicles are starting to show up already there has already been a test just recently of a level four autonomous vehicle on a U.S. road moving freight, no driver in the truck. It's coming, and it seems like it's coming faster than even I thought, but I don't want to sound like we're not going to have drivers anytime soon. Truck drivers are going to be around for a very long time, even with all of this autonomous technology happening. It, I, we have a really good decade left in trucking. I'm not going to try to predict much beyond a decade. One of the things that I talked about a lot last year was the fact that uh, although I, I've respected Uber as a company for a long time, Uber changed the game in a lot of ways, uh, certainly around you know taxis. And Uber is worldwide now with their taxis. They're certainly, you know, big in the U.S., and it was amazing technology. The taxi industry doesn't like it at all, but that's change, and, you know, we're going to deal with those kind of things in trucking as well. And you can't stop that. It's coming. You have to prepare for it and find out where the opportunities are. That's why I talk about it. 
My problem with Uber, though, was both in the taxi industry and in the trucking industry, when you look at their long game, I think it's brilliant, but I hate it. And I understand that autonomous technology is coming. And eventually, it will replace truck drivers. Just will. Um, I don't think it's anytime soon, but we're seeing big changes. Uber, though, is, is really covering both sides of the game. They're using owner-operators to capture the freight market, and they're doing a pretty good job of it. But they're also investing heavily in technology to move that freight with their own autonomous trucks. Now, I get it. That's a smart business decision. I just don't like it. And I said early on, I, I just don't want to be a part of helping Uber do that. Now, I realize companies like Volvo and virtually everybody is working on a, an autonomous truck. I get that. But they're truck companies. That's what they do. Again, Uber is basically, you know, in the freight business, Uber Freight, and then investing the money that owner-operators are helping them make to replace owner-operators. So nothing I'm going to do to stop it. I just don't want to be a part of supporting it. But when I looked at their technology, I like it. In some ways, there's only one thing I'm a little leery of, and I'm just keeping an eye on it. Sometimes this kind of technology can be a race to the bottom on rates. Um, you know, I think U-Ship was a disaster. And they were into the freight matching really, really early. They were also more in the uh, consumer sector, letting very, very small shippers or individuals find trucks. And that was more of an eBay model where it was a bidding model. And it just drove prices right down to nothing. I, I really hope that the freight matching technology in the over-the-road freight market that we're starting to see doesn't do that. It might. So I, I like Uber's technology. I just don't like their business model, so I didn't want to support it. But I did a lot of research. I looked at a lot of companies that are in that realm in the freight matching technology business and the one that really impressed me was convoy and fortunately convoy is in seattle and i'm only a couple hours away so i've had the opportunity to go up there and spend time with them and the more time i spend with them the more time the more i'm impressed with the company itself so we uh, are basically doing it now we're announcing a, a an official partnership with convoy and we'll work on projects together. I'll stay, you know, closely watching their technology. And uh, we're helping them with some things. They're helping me with some things. So we're looking forward to a partnership with them. And one of the things I like about their technology is there is a rate on the load. So basically they have an app. They're a freight broker, but they're what we're now referring to as digital freight brokers. So... They weren't freight brokers before the technology. They built the technology and then got into the freight brokerage business with technology. If you look at a lot of big brokers that have been around forever, they're also moving towards technology. So at some point, this is the, the lines are going to get very blurry. But right now, companies like Uber Freight, Convoy, those are the two big ones. We refer to them as digital brokers. So they have an app. You open up the app, shows you where all the loads are. You book the load through the app. You get paid through the app. There's all kinds of other cool technology in there. As you pull onto a shipper's property, the app is geofenced. It knows you're there. It sends alerts out to convoy, to the shipper, all kinds of people, and starts tracking time. And that way, if convoy sees that you've been at that dock too long they can call the shipper and start intervening pretty cool stuff they they're offering easier and faster ways to get paid on the load with uh, either little or no charge so it, it's interesting technology i think it's going to get better so we're keeping an eye on that i will probably uh 
go up and visit Convoy again later this year. Uh, I'm going to need a break once I get home for a while, though. Uh, another company that is really heavy into trucking technology is a company called Freight Waves. And they're into some pretty high-level technology. We've talked about blockchain, which blockchain is really, really complicated technology, and it, it's almost impossible for anybody to really describe what it is and what it does yet. Uh, we'll be learning more and more about blockchain. Uh, but one of the other things that would caught my attention with Freight Waves was their they are becoming my, well, no, they are now my number one favorite news source for trucking. They have a daily newsletter with uh, a lot of their own writers, and they have some really good writers, and they also aggregate a lot of the other news that I used to have to, you know, go through four or five different newsletters to find. So I've been reading a lot of Freight Waves articles every day. I post a lot from Freight Waves on Facebook. I share it. And I help them write some of their tax articles uh, with all the new tax law changes. And because of that, they've asked me to write a column. So I think sometime next week, I've submitted my first column and an outline for about the next six. And I think sometime next week, um, they will be releasing my first column. I'll let you know when that happens. Um, so I'm excited about that. Check it out. It's FreightWaves.com. Uh, like I said, they have a daily newsletter. I get a lot of my news from them. I had some other news about technology, but I think when we come back from the break, I'm going to get to your calls and questions. Stick around. I'm Kevin Rothfuss. driver that wants to take control of your own destiny and have the freedom to make the choices that affect you and your loved ones every day if the answer is yes then stop holding the steering wheel audio program was designed for you in this one-of-a-kind audio program kevin rutherford reveals the secrets to running a successful trucking business taking the plunge to owner operator finding and negotiating for a new truck and managing money once you earn it Are you willing to do the hard work? It's time to stop holding the steering wheel and start driving your business. Order your copy today and create the business you've always wanted. Visit our online store at letstruck.com or call our Tribe Care team at 855-800-FUEL. That's 855-800-3835. Hey, Audio Road listener, what is your profit per mile? How about your cost per mile or even your bottom line? Stop driving blind and know your numbers. Profit Gages is absolutely simple bookkeeping specifically for owner-operators. Have instant access to business and tax reports that will help you increase your profits and keep your money in your pocket where it belongs. Sign up for Profit Gages today and take advantage of our 30-day free trial. Know your numbers and master the journey. Visit our website at letstruck.com or call our Tribe Care team at 855-800-FUEL. That's 855-800-3835. Did you know that 35% of fuel economy can be attributed to your driving habits? Use the ScanGauge KR to maximize your driving efficiency. The ScanGauge KR has built-in and programmable digital gauges that allow you to read instant fuel mileage, average fuel economy, and dozens more gauges as you drive. Get to know your truck and learn how you can improve your fuel cost.
welcome back. I'm Kevin Rutherford. We're going to get right to the phone calls. I did have some uh, other technology things I wanted to talk about, but I'll save that. We'll get to your calls, see what it is you want to talk about. We're going to head off to Texas. Denny, welcome to the program. Yes, hello there, Kevin. Um, I got a question for you there about some oil samples I got here that came back from uh, Horizon. Okay. Um, and, um, the, the first one, which I did, uh, I believe it was, uh, July of, uh, 17. It was, it, this is on a 2013, uh, ISX and, um, and on the silicone level, it was at six, uh, and nothing on this one. It was, it was nor it was a zero, like, you know, they give you a zero, one, two, three, four. Right. This one was in the zero range normal. Now I did another one um just right now well um February it just came back 2 days ago uh and you know same motor and this one came back with the uh, number 3 on the abnormal and what was flagged was the silicone was flagged at 38 oh oh ppm yikes okay so we we need uh, yeah, to yeah and that's yeah we we need to figure that out. Six, completely normal. Nothing wrong with six at all. Anything under ten is really normal. At about fifteen, I start looking. Um, but at thirty-eight, first off, has that oil been changed yet? Uh, yeah, he just change it tonight. Okay, good. Um, silicon for the people that aren't aware, silicon is dirt. Uh, it shows up as, as the chemical silicon in the oil sample, but it's dirt. And what it does, the reason we, we don't want it in there, we want to get it out right away. Um, some contaminants, you know, we don't panic. We don't, like, get too worried right away. We can watch it for a while. Uh, silicon, if it gets that high, I just want to get it out of there and then solve the problem. Because what it will do is it will polish the cylinders. It, it acts like sandpaper. And it polishes the cylinders, and then you'll start burning oil. So somewhere we're getting dirt into the engine. At any point, has anybody had the top end of the engine apart, valve covers off, anything like that? Um, no, the only thing that was taken off, and I had told the, the lab guy over at Horizon, and um, was the EGR cooler was taken off to do some, they did some stuff. Um, on the inside of it, um, I'll just leave it at that. You know what I mean? But that's yeah. the only thing that was taken off okay. was the EGR cooler. And I don't know exactly. I think that, the EGR cooler's on the side of the motor. But Yeah, that shouldn't. Um, so, you know, it's always hard okay, to say. Now, when, the other thing that. Oh, they, go ahead. Okay. Now, the only thing else that, that we did different was um, three months ago. We put in fleet air filters. Okay. Or, or, or I'm sorry, on this truck it's only one. We Got put it. a fleet air filter in there, and that, um, that's what I, I told the guy. That's where we need to look. Okay. So we, I, I love the fleet air filter. It's one of the first modifications I recommend. And when it's installed properly and oiled properly, it will actually keep the silicon way down and still allow the engine to breathe better. But this is the most likely place where we're getting the dirt. So we need to inspect that filter. We need to make sure the rubber gasket is correctly installed and seated properly. We need to make sure there aren't any big tears in the foam filter and that it is on properly and all the layers are there. And we need to make sure it's oiled well. So it's you know, the, it comes pre-oiled, but I would pull the filters off, the wraps off, and make sure that they're oiled, and I would re-oil them. And then you've, you've already got the oil changed, so we're good there. Uh, but since that was installed, that's our most likely cause of this. So, again, inspect that rubber gasket, inspect the wraps that they're not torn and that they're installed properly around the housing, and then make sure they're all, they are all oiled properly. 
And if you're not sure exactly how to oil it, um, Fleet Air Filter has some great videos on YouTube, shows you exactly how to do it. Okay. Well, well, what I did was I went ahead and just took this. I took it out and um, and put the regular uh, paper one in there till for right now. And I guess we're just going to run it like that until we kind of figure out. But I I was talking with uh, with with, uh, with the guys over there on the other on the on the east coast, right? And he had told me that because um, that's where I installed it at, and he had told me that they had a mix up of the wrong numbers somehow on, on on that Cummings. So I thought that's what it was right there. Now, I don't know. Do you know what I'm talking about without really? I, I don't. So I, I would have to check with Fleet Air Filter and find out what if they had maybe they got a size mismatch and that was allowing some air in somewhere. Um, so definitely. Uh, I think that's what Eric told me. Okay. And Eric at Fleet Air Filters? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. Over there with, yeah, over there with, yeah. He okay. told me that today. That's who put it on for me. He, I bought it from them, and they put it on. Okay. So I called them up as soon as I got the news from the guy. Yeah. He told me there was okay. a mix-up. So, I, I, but, when, but when I got it, when I got it, it's the right number. The okay. FA-6116 was on the fleet filter. Yeah. So I'm kind of lost now. You know what I mean? I thought that was the problem. Yeah, let's uh, we'll stay on top of that because that that it makes sense if something is wrong with the the number or something got mixed up because that's the most likely place to get silicon is through the air filter, the housing, the filter itself. Uh, again, if if the fleet air filter is installed properly and and it's got to be the right filter, obviously, uh, the gaskets are good and it's oiled. Right. It filters better than a paper filter by far and still allows more airflow. So um, let's stay on top of that. If there's anything we can help you with on that, we will. Um, but I'm gl- this is why I recommend oil samples, because you caught this early. So oh, no, yeah. no damage was done. The oil's been changed. So we're good. Now we just need to solve that problem and get you the right filter in there. Okay, so it's probably good to keep that maybe that 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 paper filter in there for maybe about maybe what ten fifteen thousand miles and then resample well, or or not even that long. Well, I would once we solve the issue, then I would put the fleet air filter back in. I mean, it's a much better filter. You're going to get better fuel economy. It runs better. It filters better. So as soon as we figure out what went wrong, then I would put the fleet air filter back in. Okay, we just got to figure out where it's coming from, though, where the dirt's coming from. Yeah, that's what I mean. We need to make sure that, that verify the number, verify the fit, you know, that, that it's going in properly and the rubber gasket is sealing, and verify the fact that the wraps are on their right and they're oiled correctly. And if that's the case, then, I mean, we should be able to visually see this. So what you might want to do is call Fleet Air Filter. And you could even, you know, take some pictures and, and just send it right to them. But we should be able to look at this and see that it's fitting in the, the housing and the mount correctly. And everything's, you know, sealing up the way it's supposed to. And that it's oiled properly. And then I would be fine with that. I mean, like I say, we should be okay. able to visually see this. Okay, well, I'll call them. Guys. I'll call up Fleet Air Monday because I got pictures from the driver sent me a bunch of pictures right now. Okay, so I'll go ahead and send oh, them so, over to them. There's so this ones, isn't so go, this isn't a truck you're in. You've got a driver doing this. Okay, that always makes it. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, a driver okay. doing it. Yeah, that always makes it a little more complicated, but not a big deal. If he's got pictures, you know, we'll get Fleet Air Filter on the line. We'll get this taken care of. Okay, perfect. Um, do you got time for one more question? I got a quick question, just a quick question about my scan gauge. Sure. Um, okay, you know, you know, say like on the uh, the EGR part of it, that's a uh, um, or the EGT, that's a uh, um, that's the uh, um, pyro, right? Yes. Am I mistaken? The EGT. Yep. Yeah, EG. Okay, if that's blank. Yeah, the couple reasons yeah, could either be that, yeah, EGT stands for exhaust gas temperature, so a pyrometer that's the same oh, okay. reading. Um, 
couple reasons. One, you may not have the sending unit in the truck, or we may not be getting that signal out of the ECM. You know, a pyrometer, I, I, I love the fact that the scan gauge has the reading on there, and it's like boost pressure. I'm glad that it's in the scan gauge. That's not what, you know, we designed the scan gauge for, but it's a nice feature. I still really like to have manual uh, mechanical gauges for those two readings. For pyrometer and boost pressure, I still like to have a manual gauge. So we I, I've got to get to a break, but I, I would just verify, one, that you've okay. got a sensor for the pyrometer, so a lot of trucks don't. And if the sensor's there, if it's feeding the ECM, then we should be able to get that signal out of the ECM to be able to read on the scan gauge. The scan gauge is a fully electronic gauge, not a uh, mechanical gauge. I've got to get to a break. We'll be right back with more stuff. Stick around. Kevin Rothenberg. Hey, Audio Road listener, what is your profit per mile? How about your cost per mile or even your bottom line? Stop driving blind and know your numbers. Profit Gauges is absolutely simple bookkeeping specifically for owner-operators. Have instant access to business and tax reports that will help you increase your profits and keep your money in your pocket where it belongs. Sign up for Profit Gauges today and take advantage of our 30-day free trial. Know your numbers and master the journey. Visit our website at letstruck.com or call our tribe care team at 855-800-FUEL. That's 855-800-3835. Did you know that 35% of fuel economy can be attributed to your driving habits? Use the Scan Gauge KR to maximize your driving efficiency. The Scan Gauge KR has built in and programmable digital gauges that allow you to read instant fuel mileage, average fuel economy, and dozens more gauges as you drive. Get to know your truck and learn how you can improve your fuel cost and keep your money in your pocket where it belongs. Drive smarter and master the journey. Get yours today at Let'sTruck.com or call our Tribe Care team at 855 800 Fuel. That's 855 800 3835. As a professional driver, there is no question that fuel is your highest cost. Fuel Gauges tracks each fuel up, provides your 30, 60, and 90-day miles per gallon average, also tracks maintenance and modifications. Best of all, it is completely free to use. There is no excuse not to use your miles per gallon and start improving your fuel economy. Download the Fuel Gauges app today and keep your money in your pocket where it belongs. Let Fuel Gauges help you master the journey. Visit our website at Let's Truck. Or call Tribe Care Team at 855-800-FUEL. That's 855-800-3835. Are you a driver that wants to take control of your own destiny and have the freedom to make the choices that affect you and your loved ones every day? If the answer is yes, then Stop Holding the Steering Wheel audio program was designed for you. In this one-of-a-kind audio program, Kevin Rutherford reveals the secrets to running a successful trucking business, taking the plunge to owner-operator, finding and negotiating for a new truck, and managing money once you earn it. Are you willing to do the hard work? It's time to stop holding the steering wheel and start driving your business. Order your copy today and create the business you've always wanted. Visit our online store at letstruck.com or call our Tribe Care team at 855-800-FUEL. That's 855-800-3835. Hey, have you heard? We have an app to make listening to our shows easier than ever. It's free. It's simple. It does one thing, and it does it really well. Download the app, open it, and listen to our shows. The Power Hour, Questions from the Road, Destination Health, and more. Listen live, listen anytime, and never miss a show again. To find it, search your app store for Audio Road. One word. That's Audio Road. It's one more way we help you master the journey.
back. I'm Kevin Rutherford. The number to join us, 8888 Road Dog. I'm going to get right back to the phone calls. Let's go to New Mexico. Clifford, welcome to the program. Hey, Kevin. Uh, I don't know if you remember or not, but I talked to you some time back about uh, to see if you would be interested in teaching some uh, trucking business 101 or something like that uh, at, at, a, at the business school. Uh, oh, yeah. All of our. Yeah, I do remember. Yeah, well, I spoke to them. When I heard you were going to be in Kansas City for a couple of weeks, I got a hold of them, and uh, they're very interested. They'd like to talk to you. Um, I told them about your conferences you have every year, and I told them I didn't know uh, what kind of venue you had because I had not had a chance to go to it yet, but they would like to talk to you about the possibility of doing some classes maybe or uh maybe uh moving your venue to their to their campus um it's a really nice campus it's uh, uh missouri western state university in st joseph missouri it's the home of the walter concrete uh memorial because he graduated from our school and it has uh, uh it's the home of the kansas city chiefs train facility um uh, Ah, oh, interesting. It's, just a, it's really nice, really nice. Yeah, really nice uh, place. Um, I sent you a message on Facebook. I don't know if you got it or not. Um, the lady I talked to, she said you're welcome to call and talk to her, and she'll put you in touch with anybody uh, that you need to be in touch with. But she's already spoke to uh, some people about it, and they they would they were they sound really interested in doing it. If well, you're up for it. I might be. I mean, that that's really my focus right now. I have a new class starting on Monday. I'm working on a, another course, actually two more courses um, that I will be teaching live. So that, that really is my focus. It's what I enjoy doing. It's what I want to spend a lot of time doing. Yeah. As, as our company grows and we're hiring people that are responsible for things that, you know, I used to have to do. I, I can really start to focus on education, which is what I love. So I would be interested in talking to them. Uh, as far as the venue, you know, we're we're at a very, very large facility in uh, Council Bluffs, Iowa, the Mid-America Center. Um, one, because we have yeah. a lot of people. I mean, we have 400 people there for that week. We did last time. And out of those 400 people, we had close to 150 trucks and trailers for the week so that's usually our biggest struggle for that event is not finding you know a room big enough or rooms big enough it's finding enough truck and trailer parking is our is usually our biggest struggle yeah i i don't think it would be a problem but we have 6500 students on our campus yeah that's uh that's a uh, good size so campus. There is plenty of parking, especially in this. Uh oh, Clifford. Oh, I think I'm losing you, Clifford. I'm I'm going to put you on hold. Um, I didn't see your message on Facebook. That's not unusual for me, though. I, I get so many messages, and they go to different places, and. Uh, they're on different pages sometimes, and I, I just really, it's impossible for me to find everything on Facebook. So what I, I'd love to do um, is have you uh, get in touch with our tribe care team and give them the information. I, I will look on Facebook tonight and see if I can find it. Um, let me see if I've got you back because I haven't lost the oh, There you are. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, it's Cl it's Clifford Chap Clifford Chappie Peterson okay. on Facebook. Okay, I will try to find it's, that. Um, uh, it, could you could you send that same information to an email address for me? Yeah, if you'll yeah, I could do that. Okay, it should, it's pretty easy to remember if you can't write it down right now. It's support at let's truck dot com. Support at LunchTruck.com. Okay, will do. Yeah, and that way I'll get it and I'll get a hold of them. I'm only in Kansas City till probably uh, Tuesday at about noon. 
but if there's a chance to, you know, meet somebody, um, maybe I could shoot over there and do that. Uh oh, I think I lost you again, Clifford. I'm gonna cut you loose. I appreciate you doing that. Um, that might really be a great opportunity for us. Like I say, I really do enjoy uh, the education side of things. And if I can't catch somebody this time, um, I could probably come back through this way when I leave Louisville and head out to uh, California. I was going to go down 40, but I could come this way and do it. Let's go to Virginia. Edward, welcome to the program. Edward, you got to turn your radio off. Come back to your phone. Yeah. Yep. How are you doing? Good. What can I help you with tonight? Hear me now? Uh, I had a question about uh, leasing a truck through some leasing companies such as. Uh, Okay. Uh, if you could try to get a little closer to, to your phone, I'm having a really hard time hearing you. Okay. Oh, that's much better. Good now? Yeah. Okay, so let, let okay. me address that. Yeah. I did hear the question, but I know if I have a hard time hearing it, then the listeners will really have a hard time. You're talking about what we refer to sometimes as third-party leasing companies. So it's it's not it's not a lease purchase through a carrier, but it's different than, you know, going to a truck dealer and getting a loan from a finance company or a bank. It, I don't want to say uh-huh. that they're all the same, but they're pretty similar. And they do tend to target and market to the people that maybe their credit isn't really strong or they don't have, you know, quite enough of a down payment. The problem I have with these companies is is they tend to really kind of bring in the, the bottom of the barrel on trucks. They, they A lot of times they're buying fleet trucks right. that haven't been maintained all that well. They're kind of rough. Um, and they tend to be overpriced because, again, they're targeting a market that, right. that, that usually doesn't have strong credit. It, and... I'm just not a big fan of them. I mean, I've seen a lot of problems with these trucks. I've seen a lot of people struggle with them. So it's certainly not my first choice. Right. Right. I know they don't, what I've heard, they don't really maintain their trucks once they get them. Um, And I've been driving for 20 years, so I'm not in a rush to be an owner-operator, but I wish I, I want to. I've been a company it, driver since, so. But um, are are you being even a company driver? You're not making a whole lot. No, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a company driver. Not everybody is cut out to be a business owner. So no. I, 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 but right. there, there's certainly a lot of opportunity if you own your own truck. You know, as a company driver, your right. income is kind of fixed. I mean, you get paid this much per mile, and right. you can only drive so many miles. So that's it. As an owner-operator, you always right. have the opportunity to make more money. You can go, you know, get better freight rates, or you can lower your fuel costs or your maintenance costs. So there's always that challenge, for one, which I like, and the opportunity. But you, you got to do it right. And if you do it right, I mean, I have guys, I have a lot of people that in 2017, they made over $100,000 with one truck. And that's that's after expenses. Huh. It's a great time right now to be right. an owner operator, and I think we've got, you know, the next several years are going to be really good. Um, have you considered taking the class huh. that I have starting on Monday? Uh, no, I'm actually on the East Coast. You know. Oh, it's it's all online. Uh, I haven't I haven't heard about the classes. Okay. You know. Well, let let me do this. Um, I would stay away from the third-party leasing. I'm glad to hear you say you're not in a hurry because people that get in a hurry and just want a truck, they'll go out and they'll make a mistake and they won't be an owner-operator for long. So that's what I'm trying to help people avoid. I'm I'm helping give them a plan to do this step-by-step. And and I tell people, really, if if you take my course – and you follow the plan that I'll right. help you build during the course, I can just about guarantee you're going to succeed. Okay. 
So let now me. You have these classes online. Where you can look them up. Yeah. Let me let me do this. I'm going to cut you loose because I'm coming up on a break. I'm sure you're listening on the radio. When I come back from this break, I'll give you the details on the course because your timing is perfect. Um, registration ends Sunday, so you've only got a couple days to register, and the class starts on Monday. Uh, it is an on, all the material is online, and I teach it in an online webinar. It's a 16-week course that I teach personally and I teach it live. So when we come back, I'll give you the details. You can go to letstruck.com right now, look under the university tab, and the course is called Stop Holding the Steering Wheel and Start Driving Your Business. I'll give you some more details when I come back. Stick around. Kevin Rothman. Join us for the 2018 CMC Live Seminar, the biggest, baddest educational event dedicated to the trucking industry. This event takes place September 17th through the 21st at the Mid-America Center in Council Bluffs, Iowa. This five-day seminar focuses solely on the unique challenges and opportunities that truck drivers face every day, not only on the job, but in all facets of life. Learn from the industry's top leaders, network with fellow drivers, and start... Hey, this is Kevin. I'm screening my own calls this break. Who's, who do I have on the line? Hi, you got Len? Len, all right. Len, where are you? Yes. I'm in Saskatchewan. All right. Let me, uh, let me put you back on hold, and I'll be coming to you not long after the break. All right, thanks. All right. I'm Kevin Rutherford. We are down to the final segment. I've got a couple calls I'm going to get to before we've got to wrap this up. I do want to give you the details on the class. So that uh, last caller had perfect timing. 
He wants to be an owner-operator. It's a very common thing in this industry. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of help, and there never has been. I, I, I've uh, been teaching people how to do this properly for a couple of decades now. I have some great success stories that, you know, people that have, have done this and done it right and are really successful now. Some of the people have gone on to build fleets. Um, I, I've helped a lot of people do this. Like I said, education is what I love. What I was excited about was last year I found a, we built a teaching platform online that really made it much easier for me to reach out to a lot of people. And, again, it, it, it's, it's an online course, but I teach it live. So it's kind of a mix of both. You know, we love the CMC. It's five days uh, in September. But it's hard to get to. It is. It's, it, it's a full five days off the road. It's expensive. I get that. People who come always come back, so we know it's good. But not everybody can make it. We get that. So I, I'm excited about the technology that we've built that allows me to teach online now. So this coming Monday, I'll be launching another course. We just finished one a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's titled Stop Holding the Steering Wheel and Start Driving Your Business. And it's all about buying your first truck and becoming an owner-operator, setting up the business, setting up the accounting, getting your insurance and all of the stuff in place you need to get in place, finding the right truck, inspecting the right truck, negotiating for the right truck, paying for the truck. I cover all of those things. I cover how to find the right carrier. Uh, there is a lot of material in this course. I teach it over 16 weeks. So you get 16 live webinars uh, with me. And the webinars are always at least an hour and usually two hours every week. And during the webinars, I answer all your questions. We don't, I teach the material. I give out assignments for the week, just like a class. And I answer questions and we don't quit the webinar until I get through all the questions. So you have a 16 week period where you get to see how to do this exactly step by step. It, it comes out to less than $25 a week for the course. So it, you're never going to find a, a better bargain than this, and you're never going to find more material about how to get started. There's nothing else like this class. So registration ends Monday morning at 9 a.m. Once we cut off registration then you would have to wait till our next class, which won't be uh, for uh, about five months because it takes us four months to run this class. Then I usually take a month off, uh, and then we'll be running another one later this year. But we still have room in this uh, class coming up on Monday. So go to the website. It's letstruck.com. Look under the University tab. And it's the class, Stop Holding the Steering Wheel and Start Driving Your Business. You get lifetime access to the material. So the class is 16 weeks, and the webinars go 16 weeks, but you have lifetime access to go back to the material. All the webinars are recorded, and they are part of the class material that you have access to forever. You'll also get access to a private Facebook group forever, and I answer a lot of questions in there. And so do the other people that have been through the class. We have a lot of people that are really helpful, and they answer a lot of questions in there. So get signed up. I'd love to have you, and uh, you won't regret it. You can't go wrong. And we also have a full 30-day money-back guarantee. So you sign up for the class. You get to see the material. You get to try you know, three or four webinars, three at least. And then if you say, look, this just isn't for me, We'll give you your money back. We, we don't ask any questions. You don't have to have a reason. Um, if you're not getting full value out of the course, then we don't want to take your money. The, the course is worth every penny and probably ten times more, really. Um, and, and we make it easy. So it, we do it on a payment plan so you don't have to pay for it all at once. Go check it out. Let's go to Salt Lake City. Manny, welcome to the program. 
Yes, Kevin. Uh, what, I have a question for you, and that uh, is uh, pertains to my I have a 2014 Kenworth T680. Yeah. And I wanted to get your expertise as far as to uh, I want to improve my fuel economy. I'm getting about 7.5. Ooh, okay. Which seems okay, but I'm, I'm only I run empty up to Warden, Wyoming. Okay. And I come back with aluminum cans, which is 8,000 pounds. Oh, okay. I uh, got an ISX 400, 13 speed, 325 in the pumpkins. Okay. Um, so one of the first things you can try, how fast do you do drive normally? I'm running between 65 and 70. What I would try for one week Try running right at 65 and run in 12th gear instead of 13th. Okay. Let, let's try that. That's a quick, easy quick, easy okay. thing to do. Doesn't cost you any money. Do you have a scan gauge KR yet? No, I don't. The, the scan gauge KR is a, a, a tiny little computer display that I designed, and we have it in our store. Uh, it's real simple. You plug it into your ECM mm-hmm. port. You set it up on the dash. It, it it'll read a whole bunch of gauges that you might not already have in your truck. That that's a nice feature, but it's not what I designed it for. I designed it to teach people how to drive to get better mm-hmm. fuel economy. Most people end up picking up about okay. a, a half mile per gallon in the first thirty mm-hmm. days that they use it. It'll it'll okay. it'll teach you when to shift. Um, it'll teach you how to go up and down hills better. It'll teach you how to go through the gears better. It'll it'll show you exactly if you should be in 12th or 13th. You know, you can just watch your instant fuel economy. And a lot of trucks have that instant fuel economy gauge. The problem with it is it changes so fast that you can't really learn anything from it. And and when I when I was testing those kind of gauges that come in the truck, that's what I learned was they're not helping me. So I designed this, and what we did was mm-hmm. we ended up slowing down that calculation. So the 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 fuel mileage displays okay. that come in the truck from the factory, they read the fuel mileage every second, and it's changing so fast you can't even react to it. But ours is reading a rolling eight-second average. So it slows down those changes so you can split a gear and then see how it affected your fuel economy. So I, I would start there. Okay. I, I would get the scan gauge and start playing around with that. And then we can look at things like the fleet air filter, the flow below, um, air tabs, there's lots of things we could do. You could look at a, a Pittsburgh Power Tune for that. Uh, we could look at a port and polish manifold, the uh, OPS and synthetic oil. The, the, we have a whole list of things. I mean, if you're at seven and a half now, the goal that I would set for you, and and I would say over a year mm-hmm. period, we could get you to nine and a half. That'd be awesome. Yeah, it's not out of the question. Yeah, that would be, that I mean, would be great. I, I think we could get you to eight and a oh, half okay. in about 60 days. That the that first mile per gallon, we could get you pretty quick. And then after that, it gets a little more difficult. But I would set a long-term goal, like I said, of, of nine and a half. And we could just keep working with you. So um, are you using our online software and our app, Fuel Gauges? Uh, no, sir. No, I just started listening to you here oh, recently. Okay. So, and uh, I, I became my own. I own my truck now. Okay. Excellent. I was listening so, to it before. I own it now. Well, so, con- congratulations. You know, Wyoming, there's a lot of wind. A lot of wind. Yeah. We, we yeah we yeah. can we can still do that. Well, congratulations on getting your truck. Um, the good news is fuel gauges is completely free, so you can go online, sign up for it free, then you can download the free app. And what okay. it does is when you're standing at the pump putting in your fuel, you just open up the app on your phone, put in all the gallons and the miles and all that, and it will start showing you your real okay. fuel mileage on every single tank. It will show you your 30-day average, uh, your 60-day average, your 90-day average. Mm-hmm. And then that way when you call back into the show, I can go online 
and look at all your fuel mileage records, and that helps me understand what's going on, and then I can help you even more. Okay, okay, great. All right, so I've got to I, I I, I've got to wrap up the show. Thanks for calling. I'll look forward to hearing back from you. For the app, go to the website letstruck.com. It's called Fuel Gauges. You can also go right to your app store and look up Fuel Gauges or Let's Truck, and you'll find the app in there as well. Um, didn't make it to all the calls tonight. I've got to wrap this up. And they're going to chase me out of here. So. We'll do it again real soon. Thanks for joining me. Be safe. Be profitable. Be fit and healthy. Always do the hard work.